Hi, my name is Bentley Nesbitt and I will be doing problem two, the International Cricket Council with Cricket Australia versus the Australian Cricketers Association dealing with the ball tampering situation. <clears throat> the Australian Cricketers Association is upset with the punishment given to the Australian cricketers. They believe the punishments given by Cricket Australia are worse than the International Cricket Council punishments. <laughs> They feel as the punishment is not necessary and is more severe than they have been in past offenses of the same offense. Both parties are wanting to punish the players who cheated, but the level of punishment that they want the players to incur is disagreed on. Both parties are worried about the way the message was framed and the difference in the previous offenses. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cricket Australia had a commitment to their fans and others and their players to see the conflict through. They needed to maintain their image to their fans throughout working through the conflict to ensure continued success with their sponsorships and their donors. They wanted to ensure that they were dealing with the situation presently since they were being publicly televised, televised and they were not able to just pretend that it did not happen. The fact that it was publicly televised led to the fact that there was public knowledge and people were making assumptions in which they had to deal with effectively and quickly. They had to respond and cater to what the public already knew and also needed to reduce the risk internally with the other players and about the way that they were going to handle the situation. <clears throat> they had to specifically frame their public statement to address the negatives while simultaneously building off of their positives. They needed to bring out positives in a way to ensure that their reputation would not be damaged. The, Australian, the Australia Cricketers Association represent professional cricketers in Australia, and they had to deal with the situation and base their statements off Warner, Smith, and Bancroft. They were more focused on the players and the fairness of all of it. They were not using previous offenses as precedent because those had not been viewed as as bad. These three players were being punished and were being banned for years and all were facing all these different and more extreme consequences that hadn't previously been giving to, given to players <clears throat> with similar offenses. This might have happened because it was televised and not just dealt with internally within the association. <clears throat> Cricket Australia was forced into dealing with a scandal and were brought lots of unwanted attention due to the publicity of the situation. Their motivation was just to address the scandal and positively reinforce the way it was handled and the other positives in their organization they wanted to emphasize. The Australia Cricketers Association wanted to fight for what they felt was right, the players, and the clear-cut rules of cricket. They were more focused on bringing a negative aspect against Cricket Australia and putting positive light onto themselves by saying they are being seen as unfair, but they are doing their job by not letting them get ruined. <laughs> Cricket Australia was more concerned with their players and the Australia Cricketers Association was more focused on maintaining the reputation of their business, but they both had things at stake that they wanted to maintain in good standing. <coughs> in regards to communication techniques used in the conflict, both sides utilized just putting out there only what needed to be and nothing extra and unnecessary and redundant. They gave out specific information and not too much was given, but at the same time, the public was not underinformed. <clears throat> I think an important communication technique in resolving the conflict is just to be understanding and be able to look from the other side and see what the other side is dealing with in order to be able to communicate their side effectively. People on both sides of the issue were being affected and that was something that they had to realize. They both had a common goal in trying to mitigate the risk and maintain a solid reputation so it is important to empathize with the opposing side in order to reach the common goal. 
I believe that they should use integrative bargaining to find a way where both parties win. They found a common goal, which was reputation and keeping the peace, and so they should develop a mutually beneficial agreement to ensure both sides of the issue are happy in the end result. By finding a way in which the players and the business aren't damaged, both sides can benefit. It is important to find a way for the players to still be punished while giving them an opportunity to learn from their mistakes and not just getting off easy, but more in a way that both sides can agree with. Integrative bargaining will provide a way to go about this in a calm manner, which can be discussed in a face-to-face -face meeting with representatives from both sides. Some barriers that they should overcome is that there was barriers from past offense decisions in that this was being dealt with completely different and was confusing to everyone. It needs to be clarified why this isn't following precedent, but is doing something else and having different consequences. And while I don't know the personalities of both sides, some difficult personality barriers when dealing with conflict can be bias, stubbornness, selfish, or just being closed-minded. And these are things that both sides should come to the negotiation without in order to ensure that it goes smoothly and both sides can be somewhat pleased with the outcome. These personality traits can prevent the conflict from being resolved as well as could prevent the players from learning from their mistakes so it would just be best if that those didn't come along at the meeting. Thank you.